the old fire station at Gessler and 23rd. Fire Station 6 has been sitting mostly vacant for a decade. It has a long history that stretches back to 1932. It's an architectural treasure, a visual landmark in the central area, and a place with a lot of potential. So this is the main space for gathering, connection, uh, events, um, <clears throat> performance, presentations. The firefighters and trucks are long gone. They moved to a new station nearby in 2013, but a new era for the old station is about to begin. Seattle residents, led by a community group called Africa Town Land Trust, will transform the building into the William Gross Center for Cultural Innovation and Enterprise. William Gross's image is painted on a utility box across from the old station. But Seattle's early black entrepreneur is not exactly a household name. Uh, William Gross is, is definitely an under-recognized pioneer. He played a significant role in the uh, regeneration of Seattle uh, after the Great Fire, and he bought 12 acres of land from uh, Henry Yesler in uh, 1882 that established the Central District as a settling place for uh, uh, people of African descent. And that's what we see uh, the William Gross Center for Cultural Innovation and Enterprising presenting a great opportunity to do. Wyking Garrett is CEO of Africa Town Land Trust. In June 2020, the city of Seattle agreed to transfer Fire Station 6 to the nonprofit group. The exact details are still being worked out, but plans are in motion. And now we have an opportunity to repurpose it as a space that not only provides uh, a vital function of bringing economic development, cultural development, community development, and really be a, a major a vessel uh, and vehicle for the regeneration of the black community that has made its home here in the Central District. The possible transfer of assets like Fire Station 6 was first identified as part of something called an equity analysis when Seattle was updating its long-range plan. It's now an element of the city's equitable development initiative. And the equity analysis just told us what the community knew around uh, no matter what growth strategy the city was going to go with, there was going to be communities which are going to be impacted by both displacement, by lack of opportunity, and one of those neighborhoods and communities were the central area community that has been historically African-American community. That's where they were redlined and they created homes and opportunities for themselves. This isn't the first time a city resource has been dedicated to William Gross. Under this huge evergreen, there's a plaque. And this plaque was the dedication of William Gross Park. Stephanie Johnson Tolliver is president of the Black Heritage Society of Washington. The history group led the effort to name a park in Madison Valley in 1983. His business was our house, and our house was a restaurant and hotel. And it was, you know, uh, people would come to town and visit. Uh, they would stay at this hotel, very popular hotel. He was well accepted by all communities in Seattle. Um, he made loans to people. He was a philanthropist. All of those big things. Stephanie Johnson Tolliver says the Seattle of William Gross's time, from the 1860s to the 1890s, was not yet a place where segregation or racial prejudice against black people had taken hold. When he arrived, um, the community was really accepting of him. He was able to move in circles that uh, maybe you wouldn't expect that he would be able to move in at that time. William Gross became a wealthy entrepreneur in 19th century Seattle. He's also considered the founder of Seattle's first black neighborhood in Madison Valley. But a 1944 academic account of Gross's move from downtown to Madison is not exactly complimentary. It describes the neighborhood's growth as an invasion of Negroes. The redlining and those racial covenants followed soon after. Uba Gardira says that Fire Station 6 can help address these multiple historic wrongs. Transferring city-owned properties or investing in communities that have been impacted by racially restrictive covenants, redlining, widespread disinvestment is the right direction for the city to take right now to partner with and work with these communities to build wealth. Timing for the project and plans for raising the money required to transform the old fire station into the William Gross Center for Cultural Innovation and Enterprise will come in 2021. In the meantime, Africatown Land Trust is looking to the future. 
but keeping an eye on the past. The city and the mayor and the city council and the people on that side are able to finally embrace the opportunity and facilitate uh, the, the, the community moving forward in this way. So I think that's the positive um, and it speaks to just sticking to it. Watch CityStream Thursday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel. Or get video on demand and podcasts anytime at seattlechannel.org.